Hello, everybody. I'm Marta Gonzalez Lloret, and um, I work at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, at the Spanish department. And my email is here. You will see it at the end of the presentation also. And today I would like to talk uh, to you about pragmatics and the importance of using appropriate language in the real world uh, to our projects because the focus of uh, this summer institute will be on pragmatics this will be one out of three talks that have to do with pragmatics so we will talk in this um, presentation a little bit about what is pragmatics what the role of pragmatics is in language learning how we can incorporate pragmatics in our classroom and in projects how does integrate with the rest of the skills and also i will show you an example and if we have a little bit of time um, i'd like to talk a little bit about the examples that liliana and adam and florencia talk and see how actually pragmatics can be incorporated in these projects but we will see more in how to incorporate and see more examples in the talk next wednesday so let me start here and what is pragmatics when we hear uh, the word pragmatics people think people use the term pragmatics for something that it's um, useful and it's not a bad idea because that has to do with the word use that's the most important uh, word in a definition of pragmatics. Basically, pragmatics is how people use the language. One of the most known definitions of pragmatics is by Himes. So pragmatics is uh, what to say to whom, in what circumstances, and how to say it. That is how people actually use the language in context to say what they need to say depending who their interlocutors are the circumstances of that talk and the purpose of that talk so for example we may think that a greeting among men is very common we do just a handshake and we say how are you however this is not totally true we actually know that in the real world, a greeting is, is something really complex, is highly dependent on who the participants are, their relationship, the space where the greeting happens, the cultural and personal background that they may share or not, the purpose of the greeting. And this uh, is reflective in the non-verbal part of the greeting. So we see President Obama in a shaka sign there uh, to um, obviously Hawaii, but uh, it's also representative in the language that we use. This we can think is extremely important because it says a lot about who we are is in greetings in this case is the first example of who we are is the first representation of ourselves and our um, communities of language lots of stereotypes are created when people don't use pragmatics correctly so if they are so important we certainly want to include it into our language teaching so the field that studies how people learn pragmatics in a second language is called L2 pragmatics or interlanguage pragmatics. And basically it's concerned with how students acquire the ability to use language effectively to be able to do uh, specific things with the language and understand the language in a certain context with certain interlocutors. This is um, a recognized field in linguistics. And although it's important and a lot of people recognize that pragmatics are important, most L2 programs, most, most language books don't even include anything about pragmatics. They may include a little bit of anecdotal readings or a short explanation when students need to decide what tends to use, for example, uh, in Spanish, the difference between tu and usted, or tu and vous, or si in, in German. 
and um, there's a little explanation next to the verb to say, okay, you use these with two lines. However, that is totally not sufficient for pragmatics. We know it is important for students to uh, know pragmatics. So the big answer to that question is yes, it is important. And I hope that at the end of this presentation, um, I convince you that it is really important. So let's consider this. This is an example. This is an email from an advanced L2 English student to me, uh, one of my um, very advanced L2 English learners. And uh, she says, hi, I need an appointment to look at my composition. I can come tomorrow at 10.30 between my classes. Is that okay, Jennifer? Okay, is this message fluent? Yeah, it is fluent. There's, you know, it's, it's in written form, but you know, it's an email, so it's okay. Um, is it accurate? Yeah, I mean, if we look at it, there's basically no grammatical um, errors at all. Now, is it appropriate? Is this message uh, going to get the purpose of the message, which is me coming at 10.30 when I do not have office hours to meet with her to look over her composition? Well, no, it's not very appropriate. First, I'm not even sure who this student is because her email address is not, um, has not last name and I have like three Jennifers in, among my students. Um, it lacks an appropriate greeting. Um, really it has no hedging or mitigation for a request that is actually a high imposition because I do not have office hours that day at that time and it, honestly reads quite aggressive. So the purpose for her is obviously that I come and do a favor for her and this is not grammatically appropriate. So we see that um, even when uh, the students have an advanced level of the language, they can still lack on pragmatics appropriateness. So appropriateness is essential. It's essential to establish and maintain an interaction. It's essential to communicate our purpose, to achieve our goals, to be polite, and to be part of a community of language that accepts us. And it's also essential to create and maintain that rapport that we establish. So, of all the possible pragmatic features that we know are important and that we know that we want to include in our classrooms, which ones should we integrate? Well, from research, we know that there are three important areas of pragmatics that students should be exposed to. One is the social pragmatics, that is the social norms, the behaviors of how people uh, interact. So, you know, when do you give two kisses in a greeting? When do you shake hands? How do you actually exchange a, Japan, a business card in a Japanese context? How low do you bow in Japanese for different uh, speech acts? Another one would be the pragma linguistics, that is the appropriate forms. So, although we can do a request in English by saying, open the window, we can also say, can you open the window? Could you open the window? Would you mind opening the window? Would you be so kind as to open the window? And all of those are linguistic forms that have a purpose that should be used in a certain context with certain interlocutors, etc. And also, the, it's important to know the interactional norms of a speech. In some languages, the space that we leave between two speakers talking so that there is no overlapping is really short, like in Spanish. But in English, people pause a lot longer when they interact. So we need to know all of those small interactional conversational norms if we want our students to be appropriate when they interact with other speakers. And now how do we do that? How do we incorporate pragmatics in the class? 
from research, we know that explicit teaching of some norms is really useful. And it's useful if the norms are not too complicated. And we also know that metapragmatic awareness is really important. That is, that the students understand what is that people are trying to do, why they're trying to do it, and how they're trying to do it. So that they actually can see how people are doing things, that they are aware that these pragmatic things is lurking behind the language and how people use the language. And also, um, we know that the students need to have interactional practice. They actually need to talk to people in order to learn certain pragmatic features that cannot be explainable and easily um, in, um, indirectly learned. And also we know that students need to not just interact with the speakers of the language, but also to have cross-cultural opportunities. That is speaking with the people of the other culture, not just other students. So how do we focus of everything in pragmatics that exists? How do we focus it a little bit? Well, the most uh, easy way to do it is by looking at our students and our project needs. So in what context is that project going to happen? Physically, what context? Who are the interlocutors? What is the purpose? What are the relationships that our students have with those um, speakers? So if they're going to interview in their relatives for stories, it's very different that if they're going to, to go to um, shops where they don't know the, the shopkeepers to ask questions, for example. What kind of knowledge do they share and which one is different? So what are all the difference in the L1 and the L2 social norms? Those things that are very similar, we can positive transfer from one to the other without a problem. We make the students aware of it and move on. But those things that are more different, then we may need to pay more attention to. So how do we integrate this into language? The main point that I want to make here is that pragmatics is not something special and outside of language. Pragmatic is one of the essential components of language competence. We cannot have full language competence without pragmatics. We can have linguistic competence, but if we lack a pragmatic competence, we don't have language competence. So we should treat pragmatics as we treat any other uh, language component. We, create, we should create SLOs to target it, develop activities to target pragmatics, how they work, how are they used, and also we should assess the competence of um, language. So not just the language complexity, the language accuracy and the fluency, but also the appropriateness. How appropriate were the students doing these activities? So let's move to an example. Um, and an example of a project in which students had to interview members of the community to find out how to celebrate the traditional holiday. And this can be applied to any languages. You know, students could be looking at Dia de los Muertos or uh, Chinese New Year or any other, any other uh, traditional holiday. If we think of the content, then we would want our students to know what um, is that holiday, what is the background of the holiday, how did the holiday come to be, what um, content do we need in order to ask questions to that member of the community? So that would be the content that we want to build uh, in students. We, of course, want to build language, and this is where we as teachers tend to focus most of the time. What linguistics forms do they need? Are they going to ask the questions in present tense, past tense? How do we form questions? What vocabulary do they need to talk about this content? And then, you know, how is their pronunciation, their intonation, etc. Of course, we should be incorporating 21st century skills. So work teams, work collaborate, collaboration, how students collaborate, 
Are they able to organize themselves? Um, and also uses of technology. Are they able to use their phone to record, download data, transcribe it, analyze it, etc.? And here will come the pragmatic competent. I actually will put it right on the second place, but we'll put it here at the end. And um, here we will have to think of all the languages and the practices needed to be able to accomplish this interviewing in an appropriate way. So students will have to learn to request an interview, to be able to introduce themselves appropriately, depending who their interlocutor are, what the context is. It's not the same to um, interview someone in their office than to do it at a bar with a tequila in front of them. Hopefully they're over 21. Um, how to produce appropriate greetings, ask questions, how to manage topic, how to not overlap, allow people to speak, express thanks, and um, of course, all of the turn-taking practices, like I mentioned, not to overlap, how to change turns, how to direct the conversation, and to have a level of politeness that is appropriate for our interlocutors, and also to be able to tap into those contrasts between the language and also the culture. So, Pragmatics in project-based language learning, is it possible? Definitely, yes. Is it important? Most certainly it is important. Uh, do we always think about it? No, I don't think so. But is it easy to incorporate the things that already exist or that we may first instinctively think about it? I think so. For example, um, in Liliana's example of the touristic videos for Spanish speakers to the Big Island, we, she mentioned that um, they would make different videos if it was for Bolivian than Argentinian because the activities are important. I would also argue that they would need to be different in the language that they use so we may want to do the Argentinian videos using vos instead of tu. We may um, discuss with our students what does it mean to use a standard Spanish and what that means for identity uh, for the different Spanish speakers, for example. Um, in Liliana's restaurant example uh, of the Arabic restaurant, the pragmatics there would be essential so how do we greet when we enter a restaurant? How do we order a, a meal in an Arabic restaurant? What are the gestures that we do to um, call on the waiter? What do we say? Who speaks first? How do we ask for the bill? The gestures are very different cross-culturally. What words do we use for um, asking for a, or a bill? And in Adam's um, project, the, the one he presented, you can imagine if those students are going to go to Beijing, imagine how much cross-cultural information they need. They will need to learn the different ways to greet, verbal and nonverbal, how the people greet differently depending on the status of the speaker that they use, the context where they are, how do they address people when they present, will not be the same to talk about their project to their home families that it will be if they talk to a government official. So um, at the end, um, pragmatics are essential, essential to any PBL project that we want to incorporate.